Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for being here. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing to actually see some of you in, in person. You know, we've been seeing you on Zoom for quite a while, and, you know, the cameras are facing right at you, and you just don't realize that all of a sudden you meet somebody and they're taller than you are. It's like, uh, uh, it's very strange, or their ha camera's facing down, and you think that they're short, and they're not. So, uh, and then finally, they show up with a mask, and you've been seeing them without a mask, and it's like, who are you? Uh, so it's really great to see you all. We're, we're very excited about, about having you here. And um, I'm going to grab the, the little thing and talk to you a little bit about the road ahead. Um, it's been an inflection year for RIS-5 in a lot of ways, and we're really excited about it. Everything from, I don't know, half a dozen to a dozen developer boards. We, we, we went ahead and we we're seeding. We're hoping to seed a thousand boards to early adopters and academia and uh, uh, and distros by June of 2022. Uh, but the big news, and you've heard this over and over again, but it's worth report, re repeating, so uh, forgive me. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what we did and how we did it, and then we'll go into 2022. But in 2021, more than 2 billion RISC-V cores deployed. I didn't have any clue that it was going to happen at the beginning of the year. And as time went on, look, we, we don't require people report. So we hear things anecdotally. We add them up. Uh, and it's just amazing. Why is it amazing? Well, success begets success. Adoption begets adoption. A lot of you that are in this room are early adopters, right? You're the head part of the wave. Uh, but when other companies see that you're being successful with RISC-V, they go, okay, we're going to try something. And it's everywhere in computer science. As Chris has said the other day, it's, it's totally from bottom to top. I like saying I, I hold up the Pine 64 soldering iron, and I say everywhere from soldering irons to supercomputers. It's true. I mean, uh, certainly the runway for IoT and embedded is quicker, so you see a lot of that stuff coming out. But, you know, disk drives, um, accelerators, graphics, or ML, uh, you know, edge computing. Uh, we, we have some early beginning things with respect to enterprise and cloud, like, uh, you know, last year at Summit, Alibaba announced their cloud server. Well, this year you saw a lot of uh, groups come out of stealth, uh, superscalar machines or accelerators or a thousand cores on a die doing inference uh, engine work. It's astonishing. Um, it, it is unstoppable. And uh, the more you see happen, the more will happen. And so we're very excited about that. And that's because of all of you. So thank you, thank you all very much. This next one, there's actually 16 um, ratified specs this year. One happened in January, uh, but the rest happened actually <laughs> three weeks ago. Um, and not only did they get ratified, but also we changed the game on everybody. We actually, as a group, all the chairs defined acceptance criteria, and that was new for us. When we, you know, when we were talking about a year and a half ago, it was like, how do you know you're done? And nobody could answer the question, so we set off to figure that out. So you're going to see in, in like 40 minutes all the people who ratified things, this was not an easy task. POCs, upstream compilers, architecture tests, so on and so forth. I mean, plus the specifications and public review. Um, and look, we're a community. Anybody who's been part of a community knows it's hard to come together with one voice. It's hard to get consensus. We don't always get consensus, but we ended up coming with something that everybody can live with and that is going to help the community. Now, some of those specs have been worked on for a long time. Vector. It was probably part of Chris's initial work in 2010, but in earnest with RISC-V, it was six years. Bit manipulation, four years. Cryptoscalar, probably about two years. So hypervisor, I was talking to, to John Hauser, he's probably somewhere in the audience here. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's probably been going on again for about six years. We really made a big difference. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we did that and how it's gonna affect what we do in the future. And then finally, we started with a, a non-scalable organization, um, about 15 groups, and we've grown to basically to, you know, just this huge number of committees and SIGs and task groups. And this is important because, as you're going to see, this is how we're going to go ahead and handle the next sort of generation of stuff we're doing. 
A lot of the stuff we did this year, a lot of the stuff we ratified, a lot of the stuff we're going to ratify in the first half of next year is backlog, stuff we've been working on for a while. So now you're going to start seeing us uh, take more of an offensive, right? We're going to go and say, look, we want to go ahead and hit this industry really hard. What does it take to do that? And it's always two things, right? One is the ISA and the other is the software ecosystem. There are always pieces in both. Uh, and, and we've done a very big job and the biggest growth, we got Philip who's, who's the chair of the software um, uh, committee here, the biggest growth has been in software. And it has to be because ISA without the software ecosystem doesn't help you. So, uh, you know, everybody should like give yourselves a hand for these three slides. Uh, it's the big news. It's really exciting. It's going to fuel the growth of RISC V as we move forward. But now, how do we do it? And this is important to know because this is going to inform what we can do in the future. So, number one, prioritization. This may seem like it's simple. It's not. Divide and conquer, picking the things, picking your battles, you know, choosing the things you want to do and putting your resources behind them. What kind of resources? Well, we've got a community. What's going on? Well, it could be anything from writing architecture tests to doing the architectural review to even putting together the documentation. Uh, all of those things require focus. And if you're spread too thin, it doesn't work. So uh, the board made some decisions about priorities. We uh, interpreted those for, for, with the chairs and, and to figure that out, and we got work done. And the only way we got those 15, 16 done was because of this. The second is scalable organization. We talked a little bit about that, but that's really important because as we start talking about other places like to do acceleration, ML, graphics, uh, other things, or we're talking about doing security, uh, we have to have a paradigm that allows us uh, to develop, uh, encourage, enable, foster both the ISA changes that need to be done, again, as well as the software ecosystem. Next one is acceptance criteria. And this, I told you before, there was a lot of work. We changed this midstream. And, you know, you can go talk to some of the folks who went through this, and it was hard, but they did it. And, you know, we worked together as a team to make that happen. But what did we end up with in the end? We ended up with a more robust set of ratified, ratified uh, specifications than, uh, than we would have had otherwise. Leadership. We recruited, we enabled, we fostered leaders in, across the organization. We set goals about what they needed to accomplish. Uh, the committees, the special interest groups are now responsible for strategy, gaps, prioritization, and that very much was done by the leaders of this organization. We recruited new folks in software, in security, on priv, priv, uh, all over the place. And without those folks, and you're going to see some of them getting awards here in a little while, uh, this would not have happened. We probably have about 300 people active in the groups, and there's probably 50 leaders active. Without those 50 leaders, nothing would have happened. And so we're very grateful for all those people who, who stood up and are uh, providing leadership to the organization. Without this, um, there's no way that we can expand into the areas we need. And then the contributor culture. So we know Linux figured this out in the 90s better than anybody else. By 2014, 80% of the Linux contributors were paid by the companies to work 100% of their time for Linux. Here we come to our ISA, and, the, and, and folks who are working in the ISA, not only do they have to work on the ISA, but they got to design the chips or IP and oftentimes the products that use them. So they're very busy, so we worked very hard to expand the contributor culture model for RISC-V. It started out with architects, and now we have developers who are doing ecosystem things. We have a development partner program. Um, we talk about the contributor culture, so part of the thing is you gotta send the message, and part of the message is we have to behave more like the Linux community. We have to stand up, we have to get the work done, and the only way that we have a community is we give people, we afford people the opportunity to share work. Don't duplicate, innovate. Otherwise, there's no need for a community. And people have stepped up, and we've done an incredible amount of work this year. 
And then finally, continuous improvement. So for all of you who go and say, oh my God, there's something terrible that's going on in RISC V and we need to fix it, we encourage you to help us, right? Don't just complain, come to us and help us figure out how to make it better, because we're a community. That's the only way it gets better, right? And people have done that over the past year and we encourage all of you to do the same. Um, we are only as good as our members. We only work on the things our members care about. And so it takes everybody, it takes this community to go off and do this. And in the end, uh, the, the thing that it resulted in, all these things, was progress. We actually ratified things. We actually enabled people to deploy actual RISC V um, uh, products. So now I'm gonna very quickly, I don't have a huge amount of time left, very quickly talk about what's next. Um, oh, well, I'm gonna skip this slide. <laughs> you guys can read it in your spare time, but, but I'd rather spend my time on what's coming up. Number one, you know, even though we knocked out a bunch of backlog things this past year, things I told you were around for four years, five years, six years being worked on, we got them out the door, there's still more left. The two biggest things we started in 2021 that need to be finished are profiles and platforms. We heard Greg Favor talk about them. We heard Phil Thompson talk about them. I encourage you offline to go take a look at this stuff because this is how we stop fragmentation. This is how we allow people to have one binary that's gonna be able to move from implementation to implementation. This is how we allow distros to have one set of bits that people can download and run on multiple implementations. This is how you get an economy around RISC V that is compatible, compatible and competitive with other architectures. And then there's a huge number of ISA extensions that have been sitting out there for a while that need to be done. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these, but anybody who's in the community knows there's great interest in these things. People really want these things done. Uh, and, and they're doing some of that on, on their own as non-standard extensions because we can't do them quick enough. That goes back to the prioritization things. We're gonna do a few things really well and get to the other stuff over time. And then finally, sort of the last thing I really wanna talk about is beyond the backlog. Where are we going as a, as a community? What is the road ahead? Well, the road ahead, a lot is driven by industries like automotive. Well, automotive is kind of interesting. Not only you probably need some ISA things, but you know, you have to worry about functional safety, right? You got to worry about a whole bunch of ISO standards. So just like, you know, when you go ahead and do addition, subtraction, or vector, you got to modify compilers and libraries and things like that. You have to do the same thing for automotive. It's really very critical. It's the only way we're going to be successful. We don't want to peanut butter spread industries any more than we wanted to do that with respect to extensions. So we want to go to the automotive folks and say, what are all the things that we need to do to make members successful in automotive? And then go attack them. Same thing's true with data center. So, you know, automotive, when I say automotive, I mean automotive embedded. There's still a back end for automotive, and that actually sits in the data center, right? Uh, along with cloud, retail, finance, healthcare, so on and so forth. All these things are there, and so you start taking a look at what it takes to be successful in the data center, and the list of things that are here are huge. If we don't start them now, they're not gonna be done in three years. It's gonna require ISV outreach. It's gonna require development of technology outside the ISA in order to enable people to deploy things like virtualization. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of work here, um, but it is one of the things that the board's most excited about and our members are most excited about. We do have a, a, a data center SIG. Um, it's uh, uh, you know under what we call technology sectors. Um, and I encourage you guys to go take a look at list of risk5.org and get involved with that as much as, as, as possible. Then there's some gaps. We need to deal with libraries. Libraries are a huge gap. We need to deal with optimizers. Optimizers are a huge gap. We need to get them advanced. We need to get them worked on. And that's part of this contributor culture stuff. Uh, if you talk to, and, and I think I've talked about ecosystem a bit, but if you talk to Krista, he'll tell you the number one thing he wants to make sure 
that we handle in the next year, that we get off the ground in the next year, that we continue to work on is security. And we have Andy Dello here from, from Huawei, and we have Manuel Offenberg from Seagate, the, the new chair and vice chair of the security committee. Uh, and they've kicked off already three or four SIGs, everything from control flow integrity to side channel attacks. But we also had things like blockchain pre-existing, we had security response team, we had trusted execution, which is morphing into things like memory protection, uh, and we also had crypto, where we did scalar, and we're gonna go to vector. You can't live without paying attention to security. Not only are they kicking off these efforts, they also have sign off on everything else that anybody does inside the whole organization. So uh, a great set of things to work on. It's gonna enable a bunch of markets. It's gonna enable a, a, a growing economy around risk five and uh, it's all due to you guys and thank you very much.